I'm reading this book now about, um, speaking of changing your brain, it's called uh, How to Change Your Mind. It's a guy, it's Michael Pollan. Yeah. Yeah. He's been on the podcast talking about oh, it. Oh, no shit. Yeah. It's a great he, episode. He, did he talk about his new book about the, um, it, it's, it's basically about uh, um, psychedelics and LSD and mushrooms in particular, and yeah. it t- traces the whole fucking history of it. Yeah. I had no idea how much research was done back in the 50s and 60s. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had conclusive studies that were showing with um, alcoholism, people were 70% of people that underwent these treatments with psychedelics got sober. Oh. Depression. Cigarettes. 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 Yeah. I mean, it's amazing, and all that shit just got fucking thrown away. Yeah, corrupt people kept that information away from folks. The studies that Nixon funded, like Nixon funded a bunch of studies that showed positive benefits of marijuana. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> and they, you know, the Nixon administration just fucking canned them. Uh, like, get out of here with this shit. Yeah. I'm not releasing this. Well, and the, he, the other thing he mentions is that it got squashed by... By shrinks, because they had a vested interest in people not going into the woods for a weekend and coming back without their depression. Really? So, yeah, so, so? They, so they disqualified all the studies. Oh, fuck yeah. Wow. The psychiatrists were, like, horrified that there was th- these kind of results were, were coming back. Do you, was it that for sure, or was it people who've never taken psychedelics horrified that people were out there experimenting with their consciousness? Because I think a lot of these psychiatrists are probably really straight-laced guys. And so in their mind, especially in the you know shadows of reefer madness and all the yeah. propaganda they'd heard in the 30s and 40s, and when you look at those people and they're out there in the fucking desert or wherever they're going, dancing around, taking mushrooms under the moonlight, you're like, they're blowing their brains out here. You got to yeah. stop this. Right. If they're straight-laced people that have never done psychedelics... They might not be in cahoots. It might more likely be a bunch of people that think it's a fucking terrible idea to let people run around taking acid. Well, there was just some of the uh, medical journals came out with with pieces saying that uh, none of these studies are valid because there wasn't, uh, I forget what it is about studies that have to be consistent. Um, But the other thing is it was political and you had Timothy Leary who was, you know, the worst thing to happen to this kind of testing because he was saying, what was it, drop drop out? Tune in, turn on, drop out. Drop out. And that whole idea, they said, you know, we're, people taking LSD are not going to fight your wars. And so that became a threat to the status quo. Wow. And that's when the laws started to come out. Huh. It's interesting because he also got a lot of people to get excited about it. Right. Yeah. But he got... He took it away from it being a um, a medical process, and he made it about, you know, enlightenment, but in a kind of fluffy spiritual way. Well, he made it a big movement, right? I think he thought that he was probably going to change the world with that movement. Yeah. And he kind of did. He definitely had a big impact. Think yeah. about all those people that took acid. Like, think about if you really stop and think about Apple, and you really look at The fact that Apple, Steve Jobs said that taking acid was like one of the greatest things that's ever happened to him. Yeah. That was his, he was famously talked about it. And who knows what what an impact that had on him deciding to start Apple and what what an impact Apple has had in the technology world. Oh no, Pollen talks about it in the book. He draws a straight line from people starting to take all this stuff because it was happening in Silicon Valley. Yeah. This whole psychedelic movement was like right in that area. Yeah. And he says that it, you know, Bill Bill Gates apparently took it once, but that all those guys <laughs> were coming in and they were, you know, they there were these people that would lead there was a guy named um Ramdas? Uh, no, Hubbard. Well, Ramdas is mentioned also. Yeah. But there was a guy named Hubbard who was really like, you know, a corporate version of LSD. He was going to companies and he was taking the CEOs of companies and taking them in for these three day drop acid experiences. Right. Wow. Corporate acid. Well, they're kind of doing that at Burning Man. Oh, like is cor- that right? Some corporations go to, I mean, not a lot. But there's some cool companies that yeah. go to Burning Man. Yeah. You know? What's this? Alfred Matthew Hubbard. He's an early proponent of the drug LSD during the 1950s. He is reputed to be the Johnny Appleseed of LSD and the first person to emphasize LAD, LSD's potential as a visionary or transcendental drug. 
But this guy had a fucking life. Somebody's got to do a movie about his life. He he was like working for the government. He was a double agent. He was uh, while he was dropping acid. He was he he started with nothing. No, I think before. Before, during, and after. He had like eight different careers and he was like a spy and he bought it. He started with nothing and ended up with like a bunch of airplanes that he was leasing out, became a millionaire and then spent it all trying to educate people on LSD. He was worth like (laughs) tens of millions of dollars and he ended up broke at the end. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All for the LSD. He believed in it so strongly. That Makes said sense. it was going to change the world. And it would have. Yeah. It may still. Now there's now it's coming back. Well, there was a little hiccup where several generations had to pass before people started understanding that there's, there, there's a risk to everything. There's a risk to sports. There's a risk to every fucking thing you do. Driving your car is a risk. There's a risk with psychedelics. But there's also a reward. And I think if you're going to be honest, you have to look at both of them. You have to look at the potential risk. You have to look at the reward. And they're not looking at the reward. They're trying to, there's too many people out there that are trying to deny the reward. And you got to find out why. And in this day and age, it might be a, a conspiracy. It might be some pharmaceutical industry that doesn't want it to be legal because it would undermine their profits. It might be. It might be some law enforcement unions that think it's a bad idea to make less things illegal. It'll take, right. you know. Prisons. Yeah, it'll take people away, you know, in terms of the amount of people that they need for the job. It'll. You know, which I think is that's another story. But when you, you know, when people look at that kind of stuff and you look at like the the underlying sort of patterns that we follow in this country, you know, the patterns that we like, are you happy or not happy with the way things go, with the way things are run? In what sense? Just in any sense. In all of it. I trust that we do have the best system out there and we challenge it every day. And I still think that we live in a place where the tenets of our society are in place. For sure. They swing one way or the other, but I still believe in democracy. And um, I think the internet as as an overall thing has been positive for right. people getting their voices out and for for information period yeah. being distributed but the i the idea that we're faced with that in this day and age there's grown adults telling other grown adults what they can and can't put in their body yeah and they're not being honest about the benefits right that's where it gets squirrely that's yeah. where the whole thing falls apart it's like you're just a guy like if you and i are the only two people on the planet and you're like hey man i'm not gonna let you take that acid like why well, because it's illegal. Look, I wrote it down. Can't right. take the acid. Right. Well, that would be preposterous. Yeah. But somehow or another, it works when there's a million people. Then a person can tell you, know, you're, if you're a fucking grown adult, you can't tell me what I can take. That's stupid. Yeah. If, I, if you can't prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that what I'm going to take is going to fuck with you, if you can't prove that, then stop. Yeah. If, look, if someone does something, if takes something and does something, they take PCP and they run face first through a fucking 7-Eleven window, that's on them. Mm. That's on their actions. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to try PCP. And I don't think you should try PCP. I think when enough, enough people smash through windows and go crazy, you go, hey, maybe that's a drug I should fucking avoid. Mm-hmm. But that's how you find out about that. Yeah. You let grown adults make their own decisions. And if you're the one who's making the decisions for all the grown adults, you better have some real fucking logic to what you're saying. And it turns and out is, they don't. And this is the same society that allows the pharmaceuticals to peddle opiates to people for exactly. the last 30 years, saying that it was the greatest thing you could do. Exactly. I think it's good that they make money because they make medicine that helps a lot of people. They're not all bad. I think in general, pharmaceuticals have helped people in tremendous ways. But you can't deny... That if there's some way, shape, or form that people are influencing other people having access to beneficial things because it would impact their profit line, that's that's evil. Yeah. That's evil. You have a lot of fucking money. If you're really going out of your way to hire lobbyists to make sure that mushrooms don't get on the table, uh, th- whew, come on, man. Yeah. You're, you are, you're a fucking real problem. That's yeah. a real problem. 
Right. If you look at yin and yang, this is this is the uh, opposing forces mm -hmm. that we're battling to try to get total, complete freedom of your consciousness. Mm. These are the opposing forces. They're ignorance. Like these psychiatrists, I guarantee you these psychiatrists were worried about correlations between psychotic episodes and psychedelic drug use, and they're worried about people falling apart, and they're right. They're right. So the ones that wanted to get it illegal, they're right. It's like working on backflips when there's a fucking thin pad under you. Yeah, you can fall on your head. Yeah. You're right. If you say, don't do gymnastics, people fall on their head, one out of ten falls on their head. You're not doing gym. You're not falling on your fucking head. Right. Right? It's the same thing. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. So people worry about it that don't really have experience in it. I guarantee you most of those psychiatrists just didn't have experience in it or were super cautious folks. Yeah. Because if they did have experiences with it, maybe they try a little mushroom dose and they'd be like, wow, mm -hmm. this is amazing. This right, is amazing. and also controlling, um, you know, uh, s set and setting they keep talking about, mm -hmm. you know, and, and realizing that the the, you know, occurrence of a psychotic episode is so much lower when yeah. it's you know when you're when it's being dispensed the right way yeah so much lower you ever been led through it by somebody Not like when you really. did ayahuasca was there like I didn't a do guide? ayahuasca i just did oh. dmt oh. um aubrey my friend aubrey acted as a like he sort of like set the setting um in a way where it was uh, you know i would i would say like spiritual like not not ridiculous not over the top but just announcing your intentions mm -hmm. that we're going into this we're going in this we're going to let go we're going to you know give thanks to all all the spirits around us and all the energy around us just go into this with a good intention give be grateful be uh go into it with gratitude and then pfft, the way it hits you it hits you like like a infinite cyclone of geometric patterns in impossible colors just blasting in your brain instantaneously and you're like what like going into it with the intention of letting go is probably one of the best pieces of advice you could give people to uh avoid a freak out right go with it let it go just yeah. let yourself go and it's what's trying to do is your ego is trying to wrestle with this grizzly bear this enormous short faced bear on steroids is trying to your ego is trying to wrestle with this impossible to resist force. Mm. And that's what leads to a lot of people freaking out. So ego losing your ego is the ultimate goal of it. Um, I don't think anybody ever really loses their ego. I think you, you keep it in check. You lose some of it. You keep uh, some of it because that's, it's part of your survival mechanism. The, the real problem is like having a healthy ego. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, like if your wife looks good and she's looking at herself in the mirror, she's like, I look good. You look fucking great. I do look good. Like she feels good. It feels everybody. That's ego, mm -hmm. right? You want to know you, you look good, but it's not a bad ego. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, the real problem is when it gets out of control and toxic, then it looks like Ugh. other people see it and they're like, ew, you know, you see gross just gross behavior, gross selfishness. You see that and you, you go, oh, that's the bad part of the ego. That's mm -hmm. what I'm seeing. Yeah. But the key is to know which is which. And that's hard. It's hard to know which is which. Which one is the overwhelming force inside your mind? Which one is the one that's controlling your consciousness and your behavior? And which is, is it the good one or the bad one? Is it the fun, healthy one? Or is it the one that is, uh, you know, c completely obsessed with yourself and only yourself? Yeah. You don't know until you have these experiences, and then the 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 nature of them gets exposed. It like takes them down to the roots, and you start thinking about, oh, where did all this come from? Like, where's where's all? What's the source of all this? Like, oh, there's a validation issue. There's a this issue. There's a trust issue. There's a, you know, whatever the fuck it is. It's swirling out of that in this uh, unnatural form to create the negative behavior that you uh, are are manifesting in your life mm. like it all of it comes from something and one of the things about psychedelic experiences is it shut it like it shuts the ego off for a second and lets you stand outside of it and go look what that thing's doing to you mm -hmm. look at this thing this thing's gross not only that it doesn't work 